So my happy hens, let's continue to grow together to look more like Christ. But I want to say before I get into this that the Bible is actually pretty clear that our goal in life isn't supposed to be being popular or making a lot of friends. In fact, Proverbs chapter 18 verse 24 says, a man of many companions may come to ruin. So we're not talking about quantity, we're talking about quality. And I think that that verse from Solomon um, is really warning to extroverts to that we could run ourselves ragged if we're not careful. I discovered this book, okay? It's called Grown Up Girlfriends. I think I might have actually found it at like Walmart or something. And in a time when I was like having trouble meeting friends, I picked this up. But it's th by these two ladies. They are Erin Smalley and Carrie Oliver. Erin has a master's degree in clinical psychology. And Carrie is her best friend and she's a Christian counselor. And it says, grown up girlfriends will help you identify potential soulmate friends, mentor others, set healthy boundaries, resolve conflicts constructively, support a friend in crisis, practice healthy forgiveness and reconciliation, let go of destructive friendships, or avoid them altogether. So doesn't that just sound good? It is. I've been reading it and marking it up. I'm so excited to share some of this with you. So there is this concept that I really love from this book, which actually comes from page 42, and it divides friends or people in your life into three different baskets. And I know that sounds a little bit uncomfortable, but bear with me. It's a really good concept. So we have basket three, which is the fullest basket. It's about um, 20 to 100 people that you might call acquaintances. And these people you share cliches with and facts with. So for example, in my church, there is a woman who has curly hair like me. I went up to her and I said, hi, curly sister. Okay, now we've officially, she's in basket three because we I've just shared a cliche. We share a cliche. Now when we see each other, we're like, oh my gosh, hey, curly sister. And that's as far as the relationship goes. Do you have someone like that in your life? You know, they could be a cashier even. The woman at work where you always say, it's too cold in here. You know, those are those basket three relationships of which no human being can really honestly hold more than a hundred people. Basket two, which is between five and 20. These are good friends or companions. And remember, we're talking about in-person relationships because clearly online, our baskets can be bigger, but I really wanna focus on in-person. These people you share opinions with hopes and dreams and your relationship exists for a defined purpose. So for example, um, if someone's in a Bible study with you, you're sharing opinions, you're sharing hopes and dreams. And then we have basket number one, which is the smallest basket and for good reason, one to four friends and these are people that we share feelings with, faults, fears, and failures, and our legitimate needs. Now, the book explains how Jesus actually had these three baskets going on. So that biggest basket were his followers. Now, there were tons more than a hundred, but they were his acquaintances, people that he would help and stuff like that. Then in basket two, his disciples, and he asked God who to bring into that level of intimacy with him. In Luke chapter six, verses 12 through 13, that's where we see it. And then he has his basket one, his super close knit people. And those would be Peter, James, and John. You might remember how when he was um, in his final hours, really, he asked Peter, James, and John to stay awake and pray for him. So communicating a legitimate need. And do you remember what happened? 
even they fell asleep on him. So Jesus is no stranger to when friends let you down in a big, big way in your hour of need. But on top of all this, Jesus always met with the Father and his most intimate relationship was with the Father. So my prompt question to you, if you choose to do this exercise, it is, how are you with your baskets? Can you, do you know that one of these baskets is maybe too empty or too full? Um, and then I would ask you to pray. Ask God who he has brought into your life for deep connection. Okay, because there's only a few that can really fit in there and we can model ourselves after Christ with our in-person relationships. Sound good? So what you can do with this is take it as a self-assessment. We need to consider God's purpose for each of our friendships, knowing that not all will reach the same level of intimacy. Let's make sure that we're putting him first and, and um, growing on our Christian walk. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see which of the prompts you choose and of course your answers to them. It's really cool to see your answers. See you later, bye.